Kim Keller. Before we jump into the um, adoption of the, well, let's go ahead. Um, item number three on our agenda is adoption or amendment of the agenda as uh, published. Uh, look for a motion. So moved. Uh, I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda as published. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? M uh, motion passed unanimous. Item number four is the approval of our February meeting minutes. Um, as published, I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second. Um, is there any discussion regarding the February meeting minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So we have the passing um, with a four to zero to one abstention. Hodge Patel, he was not on the board at the time. <clears throat> Item number five would be the consideration of primary variances. Um, I'd like to start by reminding everyone that the Board of Zoning Appeals is a quasi-judicial board comprised of resident volunteers of the city of Milton. This board is charged with hearing requests for variances from the standards of the zoning ordinance and appeals of administrative determination. With regard to decisions on primary variances, which we'll be hearing tonight, this board's basis for decision is provided by four considerations. Number one, relief if granted would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. And number two, there are such extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property that the literal or strict application of the ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography or the extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the app variance applicant. Number three, relief of granted would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties. And number four, that the public safety, health, and welfare are secured and that substantial justice is done. Starting with primary variances uh, tonight, we have uh, item B17-003, 12225 King Circle. Would staff please present? Variance B-17-003. The site is a 4.11 acre lot located on in the rural Milton Overlay District that consists of a two-part lot divided by King Circle. Track 1 is 1.52 acres and has approximately 459 feet of frontage on King Circle. Track 2 is 2.59 acres and has approximately 422 feet of frontage on King Circle. It is zoned AG1 
and is not located in a subdivision. The property currently has a one-story, 960-square-foot house built in 1982 on track one. Several other accessory structures have been removed from this track. A two-story house with a garage attached by a breezeway is under construction on track two. The Smiths would like the one-story house on track one to be considered a guest house. The existing structure is located in front of the principal residence, thus in the front yard. Section 641598B5 states that the location of a guest house should be limited to the rear yard. Since the proposed guest yard will be located in the front yard of this parcel, a variance is required. On February 7, 2017, the DRB offered the following comments. The DRB recommended approval of this variance. From the staff focus meeting, uh, there were no comments. Standards for consideration were read earlier, and uh, the applicant <coughs> replied in his uh, letter of appeal, which I will go through. Uh, relief, if granted, would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. This request is consistent with the spirit and the intent of the city zoning ordinance. Specific, it's for section 64, 415, 1 through 4, specifically provides that the purpose of the AG1 zoning district is to include lands devoted to a wide range of single family residential developments and closely related uses. This proposed use is consistent with adjacent and nearby development along King Circle. While a guest house is allowed with an administrative permit in the AG1 zoning district, the requested variance is needed because the existing structure is not technically located in the rear yard. And number two, there are such extraordinary and <coughs> exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of the property that the literal or strict application of the ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography, or other extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the variance applicant. There are extraordinary and excep exceptional conditions related to, related to this particular piece of property that were not caused by the applicant that create an undue hardship should the strict application of this ordinance be applied. The 4.11 acre property straddling both sides of a dedicated gravel road is unique to any other property in the city of Milton. The home in question was on the property when purchased. In fact, it is, was used as an accessory structure to a mobile home at one time. While the Pasecting Road creates the circumstance of an extended front yard as interpreted by the ordinance, it also provides the appearance of a typical small home fronting on a street, which is consistent with all the other single family development in the city. Relief, if granted, would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties. We have spoken with several of the surrounding property owners. No one has voiced any objection to allowing the existing home to remain across from the new home. The proposed improvements to this structure will enhance the visual and aesthetic character for the applicant, as well as the nearby property owners who have secondary structures on their property. Since the home has been on the property for many years and is structurally sound and in good condition, a granted variance for the home would to remain would not cause any detriment to the public good or surrounding properties. Number four, that the public safety, health, and welfare are secured and that substantial justice is done. The ability to allow the existing structure to remain as a guest house to accompany our new home on the other side of the road will not create any adverse impacts related to the public safety, health, and welfare. In fact, the variance to allow the home to stay will further secure these priorities by ensuring, while ensuring that substantial justice is served to relieve the hardship created. We respectfully request that the board grant the variance requested to alleviate the unjust hardship created by the unique circumstances of this property and, not, and allow us to utilize our homestead in a manner consistent with the other single family homes in the city. The staff response, it's number one. Uh, the intent of the ordinance is to maintain consistency in the size, use, and character of single family residential lots. This, a, this is a unique situation in that this 4.1 acre parcel is bisected by a gravel road creating two tracks. Track one is 1.515 acres and track two is 2.586 acres. The ordinance requires that any lot that fronts a gravel road be a minimum of three acres. 
Allowing a residential structure on both tracks would go against the spirit intent of the ordinance. The guest house on track one would potentially allow a residence on a, sub, on a lot of substandard size. Location of this guest house in the front yard in such a prominent location is this inconsistent with the ordinance as well. The fact that the lot bisected by a gravel road is a unique, is a unique feature of the property. However, Mr. Smith was aware of the situation when he purchased the property. When he approached staff about his development plans, Mr. Smith was made aware that only one house could be located on a parcel at a time. Staff counseled Mr. Smith that his best option was to demolish the existing structure. The structure could also be moved to track two and placed behind the principal residence. The need for a variance is the result of the applicant's preference to keep the structure in its current location. Having a parcel with two potential residents on it would be inconsistent with the other single family lots in the area, as would allowing a residential structure or a substandard lot. This would constitute a substantial detriment to the surrounding properties. The denial of this variance would be best for the safety, health, and welfare of the public. The character and use of the single family lot would remain consistent with, the, with those throughout the city and those adjoining King Circle in particular. The value of the property would not decrease as a new house and garage are currently being constructed. Mr. Smith would continue to have full use and enjoyment of this property. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. <coughs> Approval for the survey dated 1-2-2017. The guest house cannot be rented out. The owner agrees that the parcel with the guest house on it, track one, will not be sold separately from the parcel with the principal residence, track two. Staff recommendation is for denial of this variance request, and this concludes the staff presentation. Are there any questions for staff? Yes, Walt. Angela, a couple questions. Number one, was a, demol a demolition permit issued to the property owner no, before no. the building permit was issued for the new house? No. Was the why was the second house allowed to be built? I, I don't, I don't understand how that occurred. Are we, are we really just trying to correct something? No, you can, you have, you are allowed to keep the existing house wh uh, while the new house is under construction for a certain period of time. So, so while that house is under construction, they're going to have to get a demolition permit. Is that, is that a condition of their building permit? No. Um, can you define to me what's the front yard? I'm kind of confused. Well, it's it a little unique in this case because we have a road going through the front yard. But per the definition in the ordinance, is anything from the front plane of the principal residence to the right of way. Right. So, so like on page two. Where's the front yard? In this case, it's everything from the new principal re residence to the one track. The, track the bigger one? one the, the bigger track? The bigger track is track two. So does the new house, because it's new, become the primary house? I mean, well, you could view it as the other one is the main house, and the new house is in that one's backyard. That's, that's uh, what I don't understand. The, the new house is not in the backyard. And why is that? Well, that's right. where they're going to be living. So it's based on where you live, not based on the front yard. Again, this is a unique case, you know, in that there's a road going through the front yard, but their principal residence will be the new house. Is it square footage? Are they home? Big base, which is primary residence and which is secondary? Um, well, it's not primary and secondary. It's principal residence and guest house. There is a maximum square footage for a guest house, um, which needs, um, you know, the new house would not be able to be considered. That's one of the reasons the, the new house would not be able to be considered a guest house. Well, so if I have a secondary house on my property, I, I was never through with my questions, by the way. Uh, if you have a secondary house on your property, um, are you telling me that you can't paint it, put a, put a deck around it, do anything else? 
if you have a secondary house on your property? No, I don't think they don't. But is that what they're asking? That, that's what I'm trying to understand. Or is this just purely? They want to keep the existing. They want to, but they but again, they were never denied that house. In other words, they weren't issued a demo permit requiring that house be demolished. They didn't have to. They, once they get a CO for the new house, they have a certain number of days or whatever. But why was that not made a, a condition of the building permit then? Because it's already in the ordinance. It doesn't have to be a condition of the building permit. It's already in the ordinance. They already have to do it either way. Okay. So. And was that discussed with the applicant at the time of them securing mm -hmm. the building permit? We discussed all that. That this things. property, in, the, in this case, the guest house, the existing structure, would be out of compliance per the ordinance that mm -hmm. was conveyed and understood at the time of securing the building permit? Um, we started we started the conversation, I believe, before the property was even purchased. Okay, so the applicant came before the city before purchasing the property, and this was understood at that point. Mm -hmm. Did you go through the process of going through the design review board to get a demolition permit? They have not applied for a demolition well, permit. Why so wasn't that required? It's, it's Again, they don't have to get the demo permit I until understand. this variance is denied. I'm not saying you have to get it, but you at least go through all the steps that get you to the demolition permit. Not really. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do that until you're ready to move into the new house or this variance is denied. So will you issue them a CO for this new house if they don't have that other house demolished? Um, I'd have to check the ordinance to see how many days they have. Um, the ordinance tells them how many days they can keep this. Um, okay. I think they can get a CO and then they, you have a certain number of days to either get a variance or get the demo permit. Okay. Thank you. Any further What's questions? the maximum and square footage? Bill, hang on, hang on. Any further questions? Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. Maximum <laughs> square footage for a guest house? Um, I believe it's 1,500 square feet. Thank you. Any further questions for staff? Yes, Kim. Maybe I'm being slow here. I still don't understand where the front yard is. So in this case, it's everything in front of the principal residence. Okay. Including so you don't see another front yard that looks like this. So your front yard doesn't matter where the street is, the main street? Usually it does. In this case, the interpretation is that it's everything in front of that of the new house. Including crossing the street to the other side of the street. That would also be considered I usually front. just think of the front yard as abutting to the street. And yeah. every other one, that's our. That's why I. I may, maybe to help clarify, I know I asked staff this earlier. Part of, um, part of, well, the ordinance that, that is impacted here is um, pertaining to the fact that this property abuts a gravel road. Um, can staff please clarify that ordinance provision? Because that is, that is what's at play here. Um, the ordinance um, for AG1 properties uh, pertaining to a minimum lot area, um, it states that three acres abutting an unpaved road and um, each proposed lot shall provide at least 100 feet of road frontage, the minimum dimension of which should be maintained to the building lot line. Each proposed lot shall provide uh, 200 feet of lot width at the building line. Um, so that's that's the requirement at AG1 for lot, new lots off of an unpaved road. Um, and again, we have a unique situation that the unpaved road is right to the middle of the property. In, in, in the case of a AG1 property on a gravel road, is there a three acre minimum uh, requirement? There is. Okay, so in this case, the parcel across the street, I should say the part of the parcel across the street does not fall yeah, within the three acre one, minimum. Track one, track two. The whole parcel is over three acres. Correct, correct. So, um, okay, is question. there any further questions? Okay. Yeah. Which begs the question why yeah. the property was designed to be sold this way and all of a sudden that right. goes back I'm sure many many years yeah. of it includes yeah. cow pastures okay. how many <coughs> people live on this gravel road it looks like there's three parcels beyond this uh, Mrs. Smith could probably tell you right. 
And then also, I notice the gravel road is closed at the end of the road about, I don't know, it's about a five, four to 500 feet away. So I'm, I'm trying to understand the reasoning for having a three acre rule on a gravel road. I imagine it's to keep the density and the number of people using the gravel road down. So that's why you have a three acre minimum, I guess. Was, was this ordinance provision pertaining to gravel roads recently visited by council? It was recently amended, yes. And what was what was amended about that you know, recently with council? So it went from just saying that if you're off of un, un, unpaved roads, you have to have three acres, and they put in the, um, I think they clarified the road frontage and the lot width. And is that... Did you read those provisions earlier, the 200 I read foot? The new, one. the new one, okay. Was that adopted before this building permit was issued for this town? The building permit? No. So this is under the old provision? Of well, the old provision still requires three acres. The three acre minimum. They just they clarified, clarified the lot, the lot width. width. And the road So there was debate about changing the, the acreage minimum as part of that ordinance review? No, no, I don't think the debate was changing the acreage. I think there was, um, I think there was an incident where a lot touched a gravel road, but that's not, that wasn't their access. So they wanted, I guess before there was clarify that so that would that, that specific case would be excluded <coughs> okay any further questions for staff is this a dedicated road that we're talking about or is it just it's right away so you can write away from the building what, what, what? question was dedicated. whether or not it was a dedicated road or right-of-way staff confirmed that is right-of-way um, mr. and mrs. Smith I assume Yes, sir. The floor is yours. If you could please uh, announce your name and address for the record. Um, Donna Smith. Um, you want where we live currently? <laughs> sure. 3009 Bradshaw Club Drive in Woodstock, Georgia. Um, my name is Donna Smith. It's my husband Harvey and I. We're here to request the variance for the guest house in the front yard. Um, we saw this property in July of 2014. It was for sale. And we went by and saw it and just fell in love with it. I grew up on a farm, so I love the rural nature of it. Where the existing house is reminds me of my grandmother's house. The, it's got a gorgeous yard and old trees and azalea bushes and camellias, and it's just a beautiful home site. And <coughs> so long story short, it took us a year to um, come to an agreement with the sellers and purchase the property. So we debated about which side to build on. And um, the, the, the side that has the house on it now um, didn't quite work for the plan we were going to build. And so the other side is a little bit larger, so we built on the other side. Um, and so we are just love the uniqueness of the property. And um, so we'd love to keep the guest house over there to have because it's like you said it's across the street from where we're building so it's it's kind of a unique situation um, we're aware that the guest house can't be rented out but we don't know what our future holds we have three adult children um, and my mother's 80 years old so she's living alone in South Georgia but you know she may have to one day move in and it would be give her an opportunity to live independently so um, with that all said you can hand it you can hand it to staff um, um, we'd like to address 
um, several of the comments that were included in the staff report. Um, concerning paragraph one, um, we completely agree that this piece of property is unique and that it actually has a gravel road that bisects the 4.11 acres. If you had a chance to visit the King Circle property, you saw the uniqueness of our situation. The property on the west side of the road is approximately 2.6 acres and the property on the east side is approximately 1.6 acres. This piece of property is, as far as we can determine, an anomaly for the city. Staff in the report refers to both sides of the road as being two separate tracks, saying the guest house on track one but would potentially allow a residence on a lot of substandard size. And although having a road running through the middle of our property makes it appear that there are two lots, the lot is not substandard and meets the three acre minimum on a gravel road. The current zoning requirements would restrict the guest house from being be from becoming an additional primary residence and should not be a concern for staff. Um, concerning the staff's comments about the location of the guest house being in such a prominent location, the existing home has been there since at least 1982, if not longer. It is extremely well built and where it sits on the road is quite picturesque. Our plans are to paint the exterior to coordinate with the house we are building and to add a front porch giving it more of a farmhouse look. It has a fully functioning <coughs> HVAC system and a well. The electricity and lights work as do the hot and cold water. With a little TA TLC we plan to transform it into an adorable guest cottage. There's already a lush established lawn with zoysia grass along with huge old trees, azaleas, camellia and rose bushes and perennials. It's a beautiful home site. Concerning paragraph two, when we purchased the pro property, we had mistakenly assumed there would be no problem with allowing the existing house to remain where it is. Um, when we were issued the building permit is when we actually became aware that we would, need, we would need to get a variance to allow the existing 960 square foot house to remain as a guest house in the front yard before we would be issued a CO. Demolishing the existing structure as staff counseled would mean destroying a perfectly good building with intact functional systems and utilities that has a value of over $50,000. Additionally, the cost to have the home torn down and removed would cost us around fifteen to 20000 Being forced to tear it down would have a significant financial implication for us. The other suggestion that the structure could be moved to track two and placed behind the principal residence is not possible for several obvious reasons. First, there's simply not enough space in the rear yard behind the new home for a guest house due to setback requirements. The septic location for the new home, which is in the rear yard, also prohibits it from being placed in that location. And even if it were possible to have a guest house in the year, rear yard, it would have involved removal of many specimen trees that we and our backyard neighbors, the hares, would not want to see happen. And physically moving the house would be expensive and damaging to the structure. Also. There would be the added cost of moving HVAC, plumbing, electricity, et cetera. Due to the fact that this is such an unusual lot, leaving the house in its current location is the only feasible solution. <coughs> what we learned from Shark, you know, Shark Tank, we're gonna tag team it. Her voice is about as good as mine tonight, but uh, concerning the, the staff's comments for p what we call paragraph number three, uh, the next staff comment we'd like to address concerns their statement about having a parcel with two potential residences on it. Uh, many homes in Milton have guest houses, some in front yards. We're merely, merely asking for that same right. Because of the exceptional nature of our lot, which is split by a man-made road, uh, the only location for a guest house is in the front of the new home. Uh, current zoning guidelines would restrict the guest house from becoming a separate resident it's not relevant to our request. We're not here discussing that tonight. Um, we would like to further address the staff's comment that either side is inconsistent with the other single family lots in the area by saying that that is not entirely factual. While the current zoning ordinance requires that a lot size on a gravel road must be a minimum of three acres, the lots um, actually located on either the north and south, uh, this lot, Let's see the street number at 12235 King Circle, this is 2.13 acres to the north, the one to the south is 1.1 acres. And of course that was, that was before everything was brought into Milton. Um, our research has uncovered that there are at least a dozen substandard lots 
less than three acres on gravel roads throughout Milton. In our unique situation, the fact that it appears to be a separate lot makes having a small house across the road from a new house look completely natural and not out of place. Even if it were a separate lot, it would not be inconsistent with other lots on King Circle or several other gravel roads in Milton with similar lot size inconsistencies. We do not feel approving our variance request would in any way constitute a substantial detriment to the surrounding properties. Because of the quality of the home we're building and the improvements we would make to the existing guest house, we feel we're helping our neighbors by increasing the value of their property as well. We think it's also worth mentioning that when we bought the property, there was a deteriorating double wide trailer that was about right here to the south of the existing house. And there's a couple of outbuildings that were just, it was, it, it just stored a bunch of junk. You had kudzu, you had varmints, all kind of things running through it. Um, we, we removed that, removed the trailer, some of those, those buildings that were in disrepair, and we assumed that was appreciated by the neighbors on the street. It, it, it's, it's continuing. It looks better than what it did when we bought it already. That's the house right now. We're probably gonna put a little porch on the side of it, paint it white. We're gonna continue to improve the property. Um, paint it, make it look like a garden. She wants to have a garden in front of the house. I mean, it's gonna be nice. Um, we've had a chance to, to speak with most of the residents of King Circle and uh, we've got everybody's signatures that are on the, there, there's seven households on King Circle, there's three homes on a little private drive off King Circle. Uh, we have petitioned that, um, that's yours. signatures from all the neighbors that are in support of keeping it as a guest house. Um, regarding paragraph four, uh, the staff recommends denial of our variance request and removal of the existing home because if there was no guest house in the front yard, in their opinion, the character and use of the single family lot would remain consistent with those throughout the city and those adjoining King Circle in particular. Our property is totally unique and it, therefore it never will be consistent with any other lot in Milton. As stated previously, there are several substandard and non-conforming lots on gravel roads in Milton and on King Circle in particular, and there are other guest houses and front yards. Regarding specifically having a guest house in the front yard and searching through previous zoning appeal records, we came across two other cases where there were variance requests to have a guest house in the front yard. In both cases, the board approved construction of a guest house in the front yard for those homeowners whose lots happen to be similar in size to ours. So if approved, we would not be setting a precedent for the city. For example, I think it was variance 10-008 for 13366 Freemanville Road that was approved on a 4.4 five acre lot. And V10-016 for 340 Ranchette Road was approved on a 2.83 acre lot. Unlike those two cases, we were not asking to build something new. We only want to keep what has been there for years and improve it. Um, to state that the value of the property would not decrease if a variance is not granted is not accurate. We are both realtors. It's our professional opinion that having a cute guest house left in its current location on our property would only make it more usable for us and more appealing to a future buyer thus enhancing the property value as opposed to having a vacant tract of land across the road that basically would just be serve no purpose to us or a future buyer other than being a tax liability and more you know more property to maintain with a road running through it so not only would the monetary value of the property be de decreased if denied our right to have full use and enjoyment of our property quote would be denied as well because of the limitations for any other use for that side of the road due to its shape and topography um, we're very excited about our new home and closing. We're very excited about our new home and hope to be in it less than a month. Uh, we love the character of King Circle, which is why we want to make King Circle our home. We would like to be able to preserve some of the history left by the previous owners who had lived there for so many years and in some way be able to continue the Oliver family legacy by incorporating what was their home into part of what will soon be ours. So we just, uh, we respectfully ask that uh, you please approve our request to allow us uh, to move into our existing home as soon as we finish it. But, but thank you for 
it was a little bit long, but we felt like it was worth trying to spell out some facts and uh, be happy to answer any questions you might have. Are there any questions for the applicant, Ms. Walt? Uh, first of all, were you informed that that house has to be demolished before the building permit is issued? Uh, no, we actually signed an agreement to proceed at risk, yes. But we knew we went back and forth. When I bought the property, we did not expect to have to tear that, that house gave, that induced me to buy the property. We expected to keep it. I never dreamed that one of the conditions would be to have to demolish it to build a house on one side or the other. So let me repeat my question again. So, Mr. Smith, you're saying that you were aware or you were not aware before the building permit was issued? I was aware, issued? I think, the request that, uh, Angela, that I came, that I wanted to subdivide the property. That was the issue, I think. Okay. We're confusing one issue tonight. We're not looking to subdivide the property tonight. I was never made aware that tearing the house down at the beginning would be a condition for having a building permit issued. It was months after I purchased the property, as dialogue with the city um, in different meetings, that's when it came down to, to basically when the building permit was issued, it was an either or, which side do you want to build the house on, which would, the, the plan we want to build wouldn't fit on this side, or the, the setbacks, when you have a pie-shaped lot, it wouldn't fit with the rear setbacks on the side, and we had two or three big oak trees that, that we loved that we would not take out. I mean, the specimen trees that are there in the front. So no, the, the, the issue, the central issue, and we want to allude, we keep talking about track one and track two, we're not talking about two separate lots. I think that's where it's being confused that yes, I wanted to consider subdividing it that was off the table to proceed and build a house would be, you'll have to have a variance to keep the guest house in the front yard. I didn't think there'd be any issue with it being granted because the pre that's not setting a new precedent. There, there's several examples of that. Any other questions? Um, I had one. You mentioned the existing structure. Um, when was a, and you purchased the property in 2014? Uh, July of 2015. 15. Um, was that structure inhabited at that point? It was usable, yes. Right. Had running water, well, heat and air. Right, yes. but this, was someone living there is what I'm getting no, at? Well, it was a, an estate sale. that had been vacant for a few years uh, due to the, Mr. Oliver had passed away. Okay, all right. Um, I have no further questions. Is there anyone else? From? Okay, you can have a seat. We'll open up for public comment. So I'll open the floor for public comment. We're going to handle this um, and very clearly. There's a 10-minute um, maximum uh, for public comment divided into two groups. Um, any of you that are in favor, I'll ask you to speak in group one. If you're uh, in opposition, I'll ask you to speak in group two, um, subject to the 10-minute uh, uh, limitation. So if there's anyone here at the public that would care to speak in favor, please come forward with a yellow comment card. Um. I'm not sure which group I fit into. My name is Scott Gronholm, and I live at uh, 12200 King Circle, uh, right next door to the <laughs> parcel where the new house has been built. Um, and uh, I, I guess my, I don't quite understand how two houses were allowed to be built in the first place. But that being said, I, I do want to be a good neighbor to these, you know, I mean, I'm going to have neighbors and I want to be a good neighbor. So that's where I um, don't want to speak in opposition to the house staying there. But what I do have a great concern about is um, if the house is allowed to stay I worry that in the future there will be a, just a stepping stone to allow the properties to be divided in the future. And, and there keeps being talk of precedence and, and, you know, he says there's a acre and a half property next door or whatever. And so I, I, I understand the, the precedent situation. So that's the only concern I have. I don't have a problem with the existing 
building staying, but if somehow there can not ever be, I, I worry that it'll be divided in the future. So that's, I, but again, I want to be a good neighbor. So I'm speaking in, in uh, for, the, I don't want to speak in opposition of it, if that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here um, looking to speak uh, in, in favor of this uh, applicant? Uh, hearing no further, I'll um, now open the floor to anyone here to speak in opposition. You're slow, okay. Uh, my name is my name is Ron Redner. I live on King Road, um, adjacent to this uh, King Circle. I've known the p the previous owner uh, of that property. He actually helped me um, build my house. Um, we have about three and a half acres right across the street there uh, on 12291 King Road. Um, the, the man that uh, owned this house was a, a brick mason, uh, did a great job, big guy, had hands like whatever. And, and uh, not only did he, he help me build my house uh, back in 92, but he also, we had uh, on King Road, it's a kind of a busy little road there, we had one of our mailboxes taken out, and several years later, when that mailbox was taken out, we needed to uh, do some more brick work, and I went over there to his house, uh, which is this guest house that they're talking about. And I tell you, I went up there and, and saw this this man and, and, and that house and this, this trailer, and, you know, uh, it just made me really go back to pretty much childhood where, you know, that country people were country people when we, we needed help, we needed help. And you could tell this, this guy was getting later on in his life and he just couldn't keep up with everything he had. Uh, the property across the street, which they built the, this new house, it, it's got a nice little pond in the back there. It's, it's a beautiful little place. It, you could tell at one time it, it was well kept up. But when uh, Harvey got it, uh, you, uh, it was uh, major weeds. You couldn't tell there was a pond back there. You can, you know, whatever. Uh, this uh, other home that was there was a, you know, trailer caving in. Didn't need to be there anymore. And uh, but uh, this little guest house that they were talking about, that it's a, it's a it's basically a cement block type, well-made home. This guy did this thing. And you can tell it's it very well done. done. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm very much for this. I, I, I agree with uh, the Smiths that uh, if that house was taken down and they could not subdivide that property, what are you going to do with that? That would be a giant garden up there. But it just would basically not be u too much usable. Uh, with uh, I've known the Smiths for a very long time. and. Um, Donna's correct. Her her mom is at, at at an age where she needs to come up and be with family, and so that's a perfect little spot for her. And that's all I got to say. Okay, what was your name again, please? Uh, Ron Redner, R E D N E R. Thank you. There's just a couple minutes left. Is there anyone else interested in speaking in favor for this applicant? Okay. Um, I'll now open the floor for anyone here interested in speaking in opposition. Uh, this is, I'm Laura Bentley, 2500 Bethany Church Road. Thank you so much for your service on uh, this uh, committee and the difficult issues that you need to decide. Um, I'd like to raise the level of this discussion to um, our gravel road ordinance. While I understand the uniqueness of this parcel, um, and as indicated in the packet, staff made this applicant aware prior to the purchase of this parcel um, that, that this could only accommodate one home. So uh, what's in play here is our, our ordinance, Chapter 64, which is the zoning ordinance, which has been recently interpreted that um, 
there is one home per three acres on our gravel roads. So the request to split this is going against the spirit and the intent to have one home per three acres on gravel roads. Um, there are lots of non-conforming um, lots in Milton, and those were here before we became a city. So we became a city so that we could try to preserve um, the things that the citizens voted to have a city um, that what we believe were important and our gravel roads have been deemed very important to citizens. Um, when, the, when the text amendment came through for the gravel roads, um, I'm pretty sure there was about 25 folks here that live on gravel roads. So um, I also, and with all due respect, to the to the Smiths, I did hear a mention of future buyers um, of this property. This will happen sometime. So, at some point, there will be more variance requests. And so, in in my opinion, I think that this variance before you tonight is is very important to the future of our gravel road residents and those of us who didn't live on a gravel road because we couldn't get the three acre parcel. So I appreciate your debate of this and I um, am here to support and uphold staff's um, recommendation for denial. Thank you. Any further public comment in opposition uh, for this case? Okay, hearing none and seeing none, I will. Chair, yes. Um, I just wanted to remind you of the letter that you received probably last month um, from Mr. Neil Sutherland, and I believe he was in opposition. Um, yeah, and I'm, I, um, I'm gonna, I was actually intending on uh, addressing that because there's, there's um, two forms of uh, written public comment that I am, I'm seeing. One was submitted to staff uh, from Mr. Sutherland, who's lived on um, King Circle for, as he states, for 30 years. What, what street? King Circle. Okay. Um, that was dated February 18th and where he, uh, we'll just summarize the last point. As a resident on the road for almost 30 years, I support the existing limitations and would oppose any variance to allow intensive residential construction on King Circle. It appears to me this situation should have been clarified be before the new home was built. However, subsequent to that and, in, and provided by the applicant tonight, is a email from Mr. Sutherland dated February 24, in which um, he's, he has also signed and written in, in support, and I'll also summarize his points there. He understands that variance is required to meet the restrictions on the amount of land needed for building on dirt roads. I have signed a note for Mr. Smith, which gives my approval for proposed renovations to the existing small property allow its use as a guest house for a larger home built on the opposite side of the street. I have no objection to such renovation of the existing structure so long as permission is strictly limited to renovation, not addition, and the structure remains legally tied to the larger home and cannot be sold as a separate dwelling. So I, I hope that summarizes Mr. Sutherland's um, evolving position on this. Um, I'm not aware of any other comment, public comment that was submitted, okay? So with that, um, let you know where we are procedurally. Um, we're back to your um, option for a closing comment or rebuttal of, of what you heard, um, which I ask you to keep brief. This has already been quite an extensive uh, debate. Um, so, and then we'll move to uh, our own debate. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that was one of the reasons we deferred because we only had one letter in opposition and we saw the staff report last month. And so to make sure we had unanimity with the people that we talked to, that's why I went to Mr. Sutherland the next morning and uh, he was confused because the way the signage, even the way the property is, we have two signs. You got one on each side people thought we're building two houses and that was never the case. I mean, the way it's written up for the application. So once, uh, you know, I clarified that with him. That's why he, he wrote uh, or emailed uh, Angela to rescind really the letter that he, he sent 
But I also want to add that Mr. Harry Schwartz, that is a large tract owner at the end of King Circle over 100 acres, he would be here tonight if we were down at city, the new city hall. But when we changed the venue, he just, you know, it's a little farther of a drive. He totally supports, he signed it. He would talk to anybody. He's been a great, he appreciates what I've done with the street, what we, what our intentions are. They're pure, they're honest. We're not pulling anything on anybody. I guess one question I have for, for staff, and I'm kind of curious, was a text amendment, because this three acre, and I think Mr. Recook alluded to it, the whole ordinance, the three acre minimum lot size next to an unpaved road, that was a very antiquated old Fulton County ordinance. Back, I think it originated in the 30s or 40s. We went back a little while, did a little research on it to keep the dust down on the street. It had nothing to do with density. You know, back in the day, uh, you just didn't want a lot of cars. It, you know, it, it was a way of um, a, a, a keeping it down, but it was just something that I think the city of Milton chose to adopt as part of the Fulton County Code that came into play. I guess my question has a text amendment since we started this process um, because we brought that to light and we questioned it. Um, if Ms. Angela could answer that one, has been has that ordinance be, been rewritten or a text amendment alluding to that since we have started this process? Because uh, is that is that true? I haven't. I'm not aware of that, and I think that's part of. Uh, mayor and council, when we started this process, the whole part of looking at the property, we looked at every which way that we could comply. So I'm just curious if new rules of the game have been, been passed since we started building our house and come up with a variance application. I think that's... What I heard from staff, and I'll, I'll ask you to reaffirm this, what I heard from staff tonight is that the recent reaffirmation of the ordinance, the three acre minimum on gravel roads, the reaffirmation of that by council mm -hmm. included a text amendment to clarify lot width and road frontage. It did nothing to change the three acre minimum along gravel roads. So right. that that remains consistent. Yes, uh, Angela, is that is that a clear clear interpretation? It is. Um, as far as I know, there hasn't been any uh, any interest in reducing the lot size for the gravel roads. Thank you. And again, to reiterate, that is that is not what we're here tonight not talking about subdividing the parcel we just want to keep the guest house that is there and uh, by definition though at earlier meetings with the mayor uh, and the city attorney by definition the definition of what a lot is that even confuses the issue more so with what is the front yard what's the backyard this is an anomaly and I just I just ask that you consider that when you make your ultimate decision because this this is we think, and we've done a lot of research, that this is the only this is the only instant in Milton. We're not going to set a press. I mean, this we're just trying to true up something that's that, that when it was a, the city adopted this or annexed this property into the city, you're just trying to clean up a few things, the sins of the past with Fulton County. Everything on King Circle is non-conforming, almost everything. Okay. Thank Anything you. further? Anything I mean, further? That's, that's all my comments. Okay. Thank you unless there are questions. Uh, are there any uh, remaining questions for the applicant? Okay, uh, any questions? You can have a seat. Thank you, sir. Any questions for staff? Yes. Um, I'm gonna ask our, our attorney so we can earn his money every once in a while. What, what is the precedence for what rulings we make in a case? Is there such a thing as forward zoning appeals precedent? For, for the most part, the law treats property individually and unique. Um, generally speaking, a decision of this board is based solely on the particular property in front of it and for the most part does not establish a clear precedent. Now, if every material fact about two properties are exactly the same, there may be some argument that could be made that is best to be consistent. Um, that may be more of a practical and, and political um, consideration than a legal consideration because the state of the law. So generally speaking, you, you don't set a legal precedent by any of your decisions. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sure, sure will. Um, so in terms of the demo permit, so, so the 
situation is temporary residence during construction of a new house temporary use of existing dwelling while residence is being built and so they have ninety days after the issuance of the c e o or a year um, after the issuance of the building permit whichever comes first to Thank you for clarifying that. Any further questions for staff? Yes, Arch. Is that a temporary CO or is that a permanent CO? It's the official CO. The official CO. Um, when was the building permit pulled, date-wise, do we know? Is that something you have available in your file? All right, any further questions for staff? Okay, uh, with no further questions, I'll note that the public hearing is, is now closed and I'll open the floor for a motion and a second. Yes, Walt. I'm gonna make a motion for approval of variance V17-003. This is to allow a guest house to be located in the front yard based on Article 2, Section 64-1598B5. Uh, with conditions, uh, those conditions are the, based on the approval per the survey dated January 4th, that's what this survey shows, 2017 by LCE Engineers, Inc., that the guest house cannot be rented out Number three, that the owner agrees that the parcel with the guest house on it, track one, will not be sold separately from the parcel with the principal residence, track two. And fourth, the secondary house shall be painted in a porch ad added no later than 90 days after the CO is issued on the main house. Um, that last condition yeah, I mean, what happens if it's part way? I mean, as a practical matter, you set a deadline. I mean, if they're still, you know, then they either haven't started, they have a permit to construct the porch, or they're in the process of constructing the porch, or they haven't even started. Um, what, what are your thoughts on what you intend to be the result of that? Uh, Hundred dollar a day fine. I can't probably impose that, can I? Yeah, yeah not through I this. Think so. The, the I'm trying I'm I'm trying trying depending to on how it's worded, the net effect would be okay. You can no longer do anything with it, with in terms of a porch, and okay. I, mean, I, I don't know what w we would do. What w I guess it's more a matter of what would you want to be done if they're in the process of building it. What I'm looking for, and maybe you can help me with the wording. What I don't want to do is have the property looking in the condition is for the adjoining owners. I want it to be improved as much as possible versus what it is today. So I'm trying to add a little bit of. Of, uh, of benefit to those adjoining owners. Okay, so this was ju this was just to require architectural additions to the existing. Uh, I mean, house. I, I, mean uh, I think what I would see is more a matter of just making that a conditional requirement, just that it be added. I think at some point, I mean, staff can then if they don't see progress towards that can you know issue notices of violation citations it, i mean right they, they can uh, interpret and understand that there is some time needed to actually construct something but at some point in time it needs to be done and so i just i wouldn't put it necessarily put a time limit on it doesn't really change anything okay the only reason i put the timetable was to make sure that the adjoining owners knew that there was some period which it would get done that's and that's the reason just no different than the demolition or whatever else and you're saying I still can't put yeah, that no, on. okay I, uh, understanding that uh, that that's probably fine it's it's effective I'm gonna make it 120 days what you think I mean more? I the 90 days was fine I, I thought we kind of had a different approach to it understanding that yeah I think right. putting I mean the same effect once they get there they'll see if there's 
progress and what have you. And it may not be approved anyway. So yeah. we do be. But the reason I, I, I was well, voting on, for the approval. Hang on, we haven't even gotten to the second. And, and, okay. and, and yeah, actually, let, let me also seek clarification. Are You're saying they will be required to. It's not a matter of, because I know That's they mentioned correct. that they want to. That was where I thought the you were saying. The shallow was used. So they, they must do it. It's not, a, it's not an option. That's okay. correct. Do I have a second for this motion? Okay, uh, I'm not hearing any. I'll uh, move to make a motion uh, to deny B17-003 uh, to allow a guest house to be located in the front yard. I'll second that motion. So I, we have a second. I, I, I do believe it does not meet any of the criteria set out there for ground two. I think it's in violation of the letter, the spirit, and the intent of the ordinance. We have a, an ordinance that talks about uh, three acre minimum lots on unpaved roads. Sure, there are lots of non-conforming uh, uh, parcels, but that's true of any, any part of the zoning ordinance. When a, a zoning ordinance is put in place, plans are put in place, there are things that don't match that, and they have to evolve over a period of time. And I think a uh, guest house here in the front yard uh, is just doesn't comply with the, uh, the, the, the zoning in any way, um, either the letter, the spirit, or the intent. So I'll second that motion. Um, my concerns were similar in that um, there's four conditions, as I said earlier. Um, I don't believe that the applicant has demonstrated that this their proposed um, variance uh, request fits within the spirit and intent of our ordinance, which has been uh, widely in, in discussed. Um, uh, there was no um, correction from an inheritance from Fulton County. This was imposed uh, by the applicant in the sense that they chose to build a second structure knowing that they, this would cause a, a variance uh, issue. Um, so um, I do, I do believe that there are ex exceptional and extraordinary conditions pertaining to this property, um, which has been widely uh, discussed tonight. Um, but I don't believe that um, we satisfied all four conditions, which is our criteria for, uh, for approval. And, and if I might add, no circumstances were there when the developer purchased the property. Understand. And experienced developers on the website, you can see these people know what they're doing and they know how to do due diligence. And to me, this, you know, just my opinion, it just looks like a workaround to try to get around what we're trying to do with the ordinance. And I strongly think that this is the case. Yes, Walt. Uh, I, I guess I have a, obviously, an opposite feeling. Number one, we've got every property owner that is on that street more or less saying that they're in agreement to allow it, provided the conditions are. There's uh, some conditions made to restrict the ability for the property to be developed. So uh, as far as keeping it in harmony with the community, I think they're showing a good, I guess, working with that whole neighborhood. Well, secondly, I there are, I didn't interrupt you, okay. and secondly, there are other lots on that road that are also small, but they're not asking for anything less than three acres on that property. They're, they're basically saying, I've got this land, I have a house. I'm, I mean, I can't understand why you want to decrease our tax digest by a house, how that has any impact on anything. This is a pre-existing house. If the, if the staff really had such a strong feeling, they should have asked for a demolition permit and required it before the house was issued. And uh, uh, again, I, I just don't see where we have allowed other structures in the front of the primary house in, in other locations, which I know I've been on this board for 10 years. And, uh, and this is an existing house. It's not like they're asking to build a new one. Um, I, I just don't, don't understand why. Okay, are those your three points? We're, we're being concerned, but when I look at the 
you know, health, safety, and welfare. I don't see any violation of health, safety, and welfare. I don't see any problem with working within the community as a, as a standard. Uh, I, I just I just don't understand why why you're making an issue to, to deny it. So um, I, I, I would don't. like to comment on, on your points. We're not here to determine decisions based on a tax digest. That's not our purview, number one. Number two, I think staff appropriately addressed um, the process in terms of securing a CO and a demolition permit. Um, could staff have, have added uh, stronger language perhaps, but the applicant did sign an understanding that, that um, this, they would be in violation of, the, of, of uh, our ordinance. Um, thirdly, as far as your, your reference, and you just clarified this with staff, this property is in, in circumstances unique unto even the ones that the applicant referenced. The, uh, so there is no precedent. Yes, we have allowed structures in the front yard under different circumstances, not on a gravel road, not subject to this, this ordinance. So um, I feel, as Bill has commented, this is against the spirit of intent. It is a self-imposed hardship, um, even though the property itself is unique. Um, yes, your letters of support would suggest that it meets the third consideration, um, and perhaps the fourth, but our determination is all four. Can I have a I, I, point? And I apologize for interrupting. No, no, that's fine. fine. But we don't zone by community. And yes, we have a list of neighbors, but that is some support it, some do not. I'm very sensitive about my neighbors and things they want to do, and some of them have done a few little things that uh, don't quite meet with my approval but I want to be a good neighbor and just stay within the road. I'm in real support of that, but we don't zone by committee. Um, secondly, our, our, the tax road isn't our, isn't our job, as Todd mentioned, and one of the uh, most visible issues in the city right now is density and green space. We have three acre lot minimum on dirt, uh, unpaved roads for a reason, and I think this has Leaving that asset in green space. Kim, you were seeking time. I guess, you know, as I look at these pictures, um, this does not offend me, the, the second house. It almost looks like it's a separate property. I think I would have feel differently if the street did not bisect their, their property. So, Visually, as I look at this, it looks like there's a small house on one side of the road and a big house. It doesn't look like this small house is a guest house sitting in someone's front yard. Um, so, it, I think in regards to, and I know that's not maybe our purview here, but when we're creating value to the property, that the guest house does bring value to this property versus you know, just the, the additional green space. Um, so that's my opinion. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My thoughts on it are that the conditions existed when the building permit was issued, and certainly from my own background, it was an issue of filling new land for the primary residence and having that set price for new land. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Um, I'll seek a vote on the motion to deny. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion uh, for denial passed with a 3-2 vote. Moving on to the next case, which is V17-004. 13755 Bethany Road.
Oh, this is it? Oh, I think that's the we're good. very we're, we're large ant body. We don't have enough room for all this anyhow. Gravity. So this again is case V17-004. Site is a 22-acre lot located in the rural Milton Overlay District that consists of three parcels. It is approximately, it has approximately 256 feet of frontage on Bethany Road and is zoned AG1. The property is currently undeveloped, but the applicant has proposed six two-story residences and a 20-foot gated private street on the northern portion of the property. Mr. Loboda would like the proposed private street to be located less than 50 feet from the northeastern property line. Section 642397 states that the new states that new public and private streets must be located a minimum of 50 feet from any peripheral property line adjoining AG1 and residentially zoned property unless interparcel access is required. Since the proposed street will be located less than 50 feet from the property line, a variance is required. The standards for consideration were read earlier, and I'm going to ref refer to the uh, letter of appeal to for the applicant's response. Bethany Preserved is a proposed seven lot enclave sitting on approximately 22.5 acres. To maintain the rural characteristics, the rural feel, to work with the existing topos, the state existing trees, and the overall environment as a whole, I am requesting a variance regarding the setback of the private street. Contemplated is to convert the existing asphalt drive that meanders through specimen trees into a street serving this unique enclave. Most of the streets are located just beyond the rural view shed off Bethany Road. Most of the trees are located just beyond the rural view shed off Bethany Road. The topography is restrictive to install anywhere else among the 256 feet of road frontage, along with the fact that not, it's not in keeping within the desired effect of the view shed. We believe this request will allow the property to be continued to be a positive impact to our neighbors and the city overall with no negative impact. Staff response. The intent of the ordinance is to limit the impact of new roads on adjacent property. The proposed road will generally, not the back way, follow the current driveway that accesses the property. Um, and also the uh, fire marshal has uh, worked with the applicant to uh, make the right of way that's required and therefore the asphalt is as long as possible. So now we got to uh, 20 feet. The proposed road location will attempt to avoid the destruction of several specimen trees which provide an exceptional situation on this property. Um, fire marshal over there. Since the proposed road is already in the general location of the existing driveway, um, no detriment should come to the public. Um, and I'm going to clarify that comment about the site distance later. Putting the road in its proposed location shows secure shall secure public safety, health, and welfare. Recommended conditions. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. The applicant shall create a tree health plan to, to be approved by the city arborist. Ah, and the staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval with conditions of this request. Uh, the Design Review Board Courtesy Review. On March 7, 2017, the DRB offered the following comments. I have no problem with this road. 
the DRB recommends approval of this variance request. The applicant should comply with the arborist requirements to save as many trees as possible and to create a tree health plan. Additional department comments. Site plan review and had no comments. Uh, the city architect had the following comments um, from uh, the design review board two weeks ago, um, where he asked what the applicant was giving the city in return for consideration of this request. Um, he asked if the applicant applicant could provide some sort of amenity for the subdivision residents, such as a walking trail or a fire pit in, in um, a small piece of open space. Um, and one thing that's not shown on the uh, concept plan is the uh, mail kiosk um, with the two required parking spaces. So he suggested maybe something incorporated into that. The city arborist stated the applicant has shown with his past projects within the city of Milton that he values trees and other natural resources. He has tried to work around and save trees wherever possible. Per meeting with the city staff regarding this site, he is trying to work with existing conditions of the site and around existing trees. And the um, DOT uh, staff person also gave me some comments. Um, she stated that the um, site distance still needed to be confirmed. Um, standards for consideration. Uh, staff recommends approval of this con of this request with conditions and I believe that completes the staff presentation. Are there any questions for staff? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, Kim. Um, maybe I, uh, could you uh, articulate what, why there needs to be a variance? Why can the road not be placed as it's required 50 feet from the property line. It's Code section establishes that a new road needs to be at least 50 feet from right, the property so why line. Can it, why can it not? Why can't they comply with that? Yes. Oh, sorry. I was like, I, I, I just don't why understand why can't they why, comply? Why, why yeah, is, is there a variance? There's, two hundred, there's, there's, 200 about site there's 256 feet of frontage. Why can't they put the road in the middle as an example? Is that what your question? Yeah, why do they need a variance? Why can't they put the road where it's, it's supposed to be? Um, the applicant can better explain that, I believe, but basically they want to use the existing asphalt driveway because um, they feel that the majority of the trees that they'd have to take down you know, are already down. Um, that would limit the number of trees that they have to take down. And the ones that are near the road, you know, the, the driveway has already been compacted over years and years of, of use. So that would minimize any harm to the nearby trees. Um, but so this is the, that's what they presented to us. Okay. Oh, and there's also topography issues. So that's how close thought. is the road going to be to the property line? I stated that in the staff report. <laughs> There's so many numbers on here. It's about 20 27 feet away from I the I see 26.48 mm -hmm. at the nearest point. 26.48. Is that what you see? That's what I see. We can confirm that with the applicant. Um, any further questions, Kim? Nope. I had a couple. Um, why is why can't this be considered a private drive? Why is it labeled a public or private street? Um, I believe you can only front three lots on a private drive. Okay. Um, it looks like from th the packet that the third parcel, which abuts the lake, would be landlocked. Is that true? In the new subdivision, nothing, not, we wouldn't allow anything to be landed. It looks like it is currently. It may be. It's got an L shaped. Lot three? The lot, the rear that, that abuts the, the lake. The 
is that lot being subdivided perhaps or is it an existing landlocked parcel? Right. Uh, 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 left, I'm saying there's going to be a leftover parcel. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about existing lot. Yeah. Looking at the site map on page two, mm -hmm. it looks like one parcel is completely unaccessible by any But if they're all over road. the same property, you can Unaccessible or landlocked? Not accessible and landlocked. So, um, I guess. I mean, it may appear that, is it accessed by the private drive? Mm -hmm. That would be the access. It does not appear to have road frontage. Um, this, this appears to be a you know, a real parcel, so it's not, th there are some circumstances where we have a few orphan lots like that. Okay, so. I just want to confirm that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm, and I, I mean, I, I'm saying I don't, it doesn't appear that the situation is being created by the purchase uh, and the I, subdivision. I was going there, yeah. yeah. Um, tree health plan, can you describe that for this board as well as for the public, what that is? Um, Basically, they will, of course, still flag the trees that are going to come down, tr and minimizing that as best they could. But the ones that are adjacent to the new road, even though they are slated to be preserved, the root system could be impacted. So from what I've been told, if you start working on them earlier, start pruning the roots and fertilizing, that sort of thing, there's better chance of saving the trees um, in the long run. Okay. The city arborist would oversee that? Yes. Okay. You know, there was mention in staff comments about a mail kiosk and two parking mm -hmm. spaces. Is that referenced in the plan? It's not currently shown in the plan. Is that a condition that <coughs> staff would be recommending? It's a requirement of the ordinance. It's a requirement of the ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Um, last question. Um, where this proposed drive would be off Bethany Road. Um, the property, as I recall, uh, drops severely from the road. Would there be a requirement for deceleration and acceleration lanes at that entrance? Um, I believe Sarah said that was still to, to be determined. Uh, she did say um, another comment was that the applicant had to confirm that they had enough room for the trail that is on the trail system. Um, I believe, I, I don't re remember exactly how she was gonna handle the diesel lane. Um, they had to do a traffic study on that, but that would be, that would be up to them. All to those details would be managed by staff At through the, the process? Yes. Nothing that we have to specify? Yes, either they do or they don't. Okay and sight line requirements based on the to topography is all handled through the transportation study? That will be confirmed at okay. the time of those. has nothing to do well. with our approval or not of this. Okay, thank you. She, um, she did not seem to think it would be a problem, site district. So again, they're, they're using the same interest, you know, currently. Okay. Any further questions? I've got a question related to the location of the road and be able to fit a house in the pool and I don't think we can say at this point thou shalt not come in to ask for variances any further variances correct we can't impose on future boards restrictions to not do their do their job in evaluating them can you hold one second uh, with that thought Chairman, I need to ask to be excused because we have some issues with him. Duly noted, um, for the record, Bill O'Connor will be leaving this uh, in the midst of this case. And that's why we still have a quorum, quorum. present. So yep. we're fine. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, Hodge. Back to your question. I hope I didn't interrupt too so much. What I'm, I'm not at all. 
what I was trying to do is get some clarification that by locating the main, where it's where it's supposed to be, are we impacting any future uh, requests for variances for schools, etc.? Right, because if it's in the buffer, but again, these are just blocks that represent the buildings in the house. They could be smaller or, or larger or smaller. They could be L shaped. And so these are all generic. They're just blocks. Mm -hmm. So, but there's uh, certain setbacks required. Right. Th there's, there's, a, we, let's get to the discussion. We can talk about how maybe to uh, preempt that as far as disclosure is concerned to uh, future home buyers. Certainly. Anything further? Um, I'd ask at this point the applicant come forward and present. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Scott Reese. I'm from La Reese and Associates doing business at 13685 Highway 9, Milton, Georgia, 3004. I'm here representing Steve Lavota and Capstone Building Group in their application for the variance to locate a private drive serving more than three houses closer than 50 feet to a property line. Uh, you will see in your packet that we have a, a letter from the adjoining owner uh, who agrees with the uh, keeping location of the road with the uh, existing drive. The primary reason that we're asking for the variance is, as you will see as we hand it out, the Georgia DOT uh, site distance requirements. Uh, on your site plan, you should see where we have the site distance delineated. 714 feet to the southwest. Um, as you see, the DOT um, has standards for site distance um, that we have to meet. This is the place on the lot where we meet those site distance requirements for the safety. Stopping distance, you have to see an object at a three and a half foot height a certain distance away based upon the speed limit of the road. Uh, that packet is with you. Um, I don't know about the confirmation it's on the site plan, so we did it. Um, so any place else we put it, we fall short of those requirements. <clears throat> so to address the safety, um, there is no alternative. You put, you must meet site distance requirements. Um, as far as topography, if you look at your site plan and look at the contour line, we're in by far the flattest area of the line. Any other place to locate the road is going to increase the grading exponentially, mass grading. previous drive was, we're limiting the scope of disturbance. Um, you know, we have the topography, the site distance requirements, we're kind of, our hands are tied as far as the location. Um, we feel like this is by far the best location for the road. Mr. Lobota's here, he will address, um, I guess, more the aesthetics and the planned neighborhood. We understand we'll have to go through a full concept meeting, we will address all the conditions uh, before approval of the subdivision uh, as far as your earlier discussions but those will be handled at the concept meeting and the land disturbance permits for uh, the process you know all um, builder Mr. Lavota has been building in this area for many years he understands any lot thus created has to be a viable buildable lot with adequate uh, building space plus room for an initial and reserve septic system We've done soil testing. We've done specific site characteristics you should see on your site plan, location of houses that are adequately sized. Um, so we're trying not to create any lots that are non-conforming or that any variance would be required. Thank you. Hey, Scott, I have a question regarding the plan real quick before you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just from my understanding, the, I know, I'm noticing throughout the plan there are sections with dots in them. Can you please clarify what that Those is? Those are future stormwater management facilities. It's what used to be known as retention ponds. <coughs> in fact, we must treat along with retain. Those are. Okay. Those facilities. I do and I'm, I'm confused. Every lot has frontage on the proposed group. And I'm, I could not, I'm, I didn't follow which lot you 
Well, he was looking at it before it was subdivided. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my mistake. Okay. Right. When it was three individual oh, parcels. Uh, parcel, yes. That was private. Parcel at the rear. I understand. Okay. My name is Steve Labota. I'm at 14415 Morning Mountain Way, Milton, Georgia. I'm also, I um, have several businesses within the city of Milton. Um, this project we're looking at will have what we're proposing is a private street. Um, it is personal because I'll have a personal residence on this uh, particular parcel myself. And uh, as Mark Law had, had previously said in his comments, I had Mark out on this parcel three times prior to us getting to the stage. The thing that's important to me, my, my wife, the other individuals that have already submitted to me again is that we wanted to have an enclave that's, that's not mass density per um, one, acre, one acre lots. We're trying to spread out. That's why we have seven on 20, almost 23 acres. The idea and the intent is to create an environment and to keep it as close to what it, how it exists now. And it's very beautiful property and we want to keep that integrity the way it currently exists. Um, again, why we only have the, the lots that we have, we strategically have placed houses and created lot lines in order to minimize the amount of trees that have to come down even to place the house. Um, in, in addition to that, working with Mark, we, we have a budget of over $25,000 to move trees that are not specimen trees that for recompense, but go so far as that trees that have value to the property and the community, and we're gonna move those trees just because we wanna keep them out of harm's way. There are size limitations, of course, in order to facilitate that. The other comment from Mark, I've worked with him, um, he's, he's requested a, a management plan, which we're fully capable of and, and have a high desire to do, and I brought that up to him initially, that it would, would incorporate some root pruning some of the larger trees um, in a fertilization program, even to go so far as we have about a 70 foot section of the private drive, which will go through some of the very mature trees that isn't gonna do an impervious surface in order to help create a great um, possibility for survival of those trees that have been existing for so long. Staff here, I have a couple questions. Um, you heard a concern earlier regarding the um, the lots, which would be to the, I believe it's to the north, uh, budding the stream. So to your to our right, and the future potential variance request that could come before us for pools. If you're asking me, can I predict that someone in the future will buy this and come before you and want to to do that? I, I wish I could say that I that I can. All I can tell you is a final plat will be produced that has the setback shown, the 25 foot stake, 50 foot Milton buffer, and the 75 impervious setback. If the board in the future so desires to grant them a variance on something, I mean, I don't know that there's a legit, or, well, legally, how you can deny someone that's a fact of asking for a variance. We're creating buildable lots. We've, we've gone through the process of showing a footprint of a large structure. So, but how to. Are you opposed to, um, in writing, notifying potential home buyers of, of this circumstance for a stream buffer, which could entail a variance request so that they are informed in the purchasing decision. I have no objection to any decision. Would you have them sign a copy of the final plat? I mean, no, no, so noting that you know encroachment would entail a variance request. Is that something that we are going to require now for everyone? It's not a requirement. I'm just asking if you're opposed okay. to that. I'll take it for a further step further that all of the properties that are in question are all university with the house footprints that are currently exist for the purposes of calculating storm water runoff are all larger. So 
So the houses that would go on there are smaller than what you have depicted? Giving them more space. And what their intentions are. Yeah. It's one space. And, and we're not trying to restrict yeah. that. We're just trying to inform. Yeah. Buyers. We can have initial. Uh, that's buyers. my yeah. position. Here. Well, that's. And we have done in the past where the initial buyer and what we have gotten blowback from is the third buyer down the, the road. And like, especially on interparcel access where a road right of way was reserved for future interparcel and, you know, the second or third buyer comes along and. They say, well, I had no idea that it was there. Um, but the, you have no problem with having someone initial. Where would we keep that repository? Would, is that something? We'll we, get, I, okay. I just, it, was a, it was an idea. We'll get to the mechanics if that's determined. We have no, we have no problem with, with, with having, you know, sign a final plat that goes to setbacks and um, buffers is that okay acceptable any questions for can Catholic? you show me on this where the variance is needed distance from here to the edge of the way has to be 50 feet so it's just like a cut there yes it's the upper 20% so of this whole piece of property here? Yeah, the along whole, that line, yes. The whole straight bull line? Of that line, yes. And what is the distance the road is being proposed adjoining the site lot line? Where, uh, Where 26 the feet is the closest point. Uh, it averages probably 35 feet away. That's excluding the radius points. You're talking about purely the. Yeah, the we're talking about the edge. Edge of pavement yeah. for the main thoroughfare, not yeah. the radius points. And okay. that's the letter that you have from that adjoining owner that he's in agreement with keeping the road located where the existing drive is. So if a recommendation has to be made, if it made reference to a site plan, that would help. Yes, we, and I don't understand because we, we show the kiosk and the, uh, mm -hmm. the two parking spaces or on the site plan. I guess I'm confused as to why we're getting comments that we don't have those. It should have been in the right hand corner right there with the rural CAA. Yeah, 40 foot. 60 foot secondary. Well, okay, in fairness, there is a lot of detail on here. <laughs> Um, and rebuttal, <laughs> we're running out of places, but the ordinances keep coming. <laughs> Are there any further questions for the applicant? Uh, you mentioned in, in here that you have a letter of support from the adjacent property owner, which would be impacted by this private drive along the 227-foot property line. I believe it's the Mannings. That's correct. That is correct. Uh, I don't have that letter. We don't have that letter. Staff does? Okay. If you could just... Is it short enough to read? Just if you want to read it into record, that'd be fine. Uh, from Paul Manning. Manning. Manning to Sue Rabona, date Sunday, March 5th. My wife Karen and I have reviewed the plans with Steve Rabona concerning a new private street adjacent to our property on 13785 Bethany Road. We have no objection concerning its planned location being approximately 26 feet off the shared property line. Both parties share a common interest in preserving the rural feel and preserving as many trees as possible. Paul and Karen Manning. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions for the applicant? You can have a seat. Um, at this point, I'll open it up for public comment. We'll handle it the same way. Um, 10 minutes total. If you're in favor, I'll have you uh, come forward first, uh, your name and address, followed by um, s equal amount of time for opposition. Is there anyone here to speak in favor? 
Is there anyone here to speak in opposition? All right. Hearing none and seeing no uh, interest in public comment, um, you do have an opportunity for rebuttal or closing comment if you care. addressed any of your concerns if there's any follow-up questions we would like to uh, use that time to uh, if there's any confusion to address that thank you for your time any further questions for the applicant or staff okay um, having and hearing none I will at this point close the public hearing and open the floor for a motion and a second. Um, the mo I'll, I'll make a motion on B17-004 uh, to approve this application for a new street to be less than 50 feet from the property line um, with the following conditions. The applicant shall create a tree health plan to be approved by the city arborist. Uh, it's based on the site plan by Brumbelow and Reese dated January 28, 2017. Um, and that's it. We have a second. Um, I'll open it up for discussion. Uh, I, Having made the, uh, the motion originally, uh, I do feel that this applicant has satisfied the considerations uh, for us tonight um, in terms of the extraordinary exceptional uh, circumstances of this property, um, complying with the site distance requirements, reusing existing um, intrusion on this property, uh, managing the topo. Um, and uh, hearing the support from the adjacent neighbor, um, this looks to be uh, complementary to the surrounding property and uh, in, in fact improving in some circumstance uh, the values in that area uh, are, was my considerations. Um, I did not address the stream buffer. Um, it's free to, to be discussed and, and amended if, if the board so pleases. Any further discussion? With that, I'll uh, seek a vote on this motion to approve with the two conditions as stated. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed unanimous four to zero. Good luck with your project. The next item on our agenda is V17-005, which is 1506 Birmingham Road. Yes, sir. So I need more site photo for you. Four pictures, please. V17005. The site is a 12.93 acre lot located in the rural Milton Overlay District. It, it, that is. Excuse me. One, one minute. Can you, Mr. Laboda, can, can you please take that outside? Thank you. Thank you. Located in the rural Milton Overlay District, that consists of two parcels of land. It has approximately 316 feet of road frontage on Birmingham Road and is zoned AG1. The property is currently developed with a one-story house with, a, with two accessory structures and a newly constructed two-story residence with a detached garage. The Weavers would like to build a 36 by 28 foot horse barn with a 10 foot overhang that would be located less than 100 feet from the property line that separates the two parcels that make up this site. Section 64, 415A4A, 
states that for property with a single family dwelling being the principal use, structures having li housing livestock must be located at least 100 feet from all property lines and at least 150 feet from any occupied structure located on any other property. Since the proposed barn would be less than 100 feet from the property line, a variance is required. On March 7, 2017, the DRB offered the following comments. The DRB approves, recommends approval of this variance request. Um, on the March 9th focus meeting held with staff, site plan review, the city architect and DOT Stormwater had no comments. Um, and the arborist stated that the barn cannot straddle the property line as shown and I will mention that later. Standards for consideration were read er earlier and the um, applicant addresses those in his, in his letter of appeal, which I'll read. Um, a, relief of granted would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance because the property that shares the property line affected is also owned by us, Charles and Jennifer Weaver. Therefore, the barn will be significantly, significantly more than 150 feet from any property not owned by us. B, there are, also, there are only two sites on the property that would allow placement of a barn within 100 feet of setbacks in all directions. These are both behind our home and densely wooded acreage. This would place the horses in an unreasonable distance from the existing pasture area and would require removal of many old growth trees. In one case, construction of a bridge or culvert would be required to cross the creek. The only other alternative placement would be to place the barn on the property line between 1500 and 1506. This creates a potential future issue. We would be required to adjust the property line in the future should we choose to sell either of the properties. Due to these extraordinary and exceptional situations created by the particular topography of the, our property that were not caused by us, we believe that the proposed <coughs> placement labeled barn on the site plan is the only reasonable option available to us. C, relief if granted would not cause a detriment to the public good and the surrounding properties. As noted previously, this placement only creates an encroachment with the property that is owned by us. Any future sale of either property would be made with the understanding that this variance exists. And D, the placement of the barn in the proposed position will create no public safety, health, or welfare issues. And in fact, we believe the placement of the barn in this position will improve and enhance our property in keeping with the rural feeling that we and many love about Milton. Staff response. The intent of the ordinance is to protect the adjacent properties from any nuis nuisances that may be caused by horses or livestock. In this case, the adjacent property is owned by the same person. If the property is sold in the future, the barn will already be present and he or she would be aware of the barn. The applicant states that there are only two appropriate locations for the proposed barn. The, lo the location labeled barn alternate is not an option because the structure cannot straddle a property line, even if it's the same owners. He states that any other level location would be behind the house in densely wooded acres areas which would place the horses too far from the existing pasture area. Also, there is a stream with its required buffers that takes up a significant portion of track two. The buffers and topography limit the location of a barn as well. Track one is 168 feet wide and contains an existing one-story house. This parcel is not wide enough to meet the 100-foot barn requirement. Since the surrounding property is owned by the applicant, approval of the variance would not cause a detriment to the public good. And approval of this variance would secure public safety, health, and welfare. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. Um, staff has no conditions for this variance at this time. And staff recommends approval of this request with the location labeled barn. Any questions for staff? Yes, Walt. Um, so when we look at the site plan where it says barn alternate, we should really just kind of cross that off. Yes. Is that the best way to handle that? Mm -hmm. And 
are the two properties owned by the same people then the two they are parcels so um and we did ask why he couldn't combine them and um miss dr weaver can give you that explanation okay and um Yes, Hodge. Can, can you confirm that on the, the uh, plot that we're looking at, there is a proposed uh, second residence? Okay. Um, so it's. So the new house is back there, and the existing house on the first track is here. So they're not proposed, they're two existing homes. They're existing. And this might have, this is, did you say proposed? This is proposed. Um, this is probably, yeah. Oh, I thought this you was reused yeah. yeah the barn was imposed on a building site plan yes. yeah which is okay okay um yeah lots of topography and stream stuff here any further questions for staff mr um weaver if you care to come up and present please confusing to me the way that you presented that it's it's one property it's actually two separate properties I think yeah we've and got that okay well the reason that that we did that was to avoid an unpleasant meeting with you <laughs> regarding putting a guest house in front of a main house because ah. originally it was a 12.93 acre property and we wanted to build it at that site um, and to maintain that other home and in fact my son and daughter-in-law live in that home so um, you subdivided so we subdivided it okay. so that we not have to come get a variance got you that created another problem <laughs> and i guess you have a letter from them saying that they agree to this <laughs> <laughs> they don't get an agree or disagree <laughs> well do you have the letter uh, <laughs> it's it's a letter from me yeah he owns i title. own the property oh. he owns title they live there at my uh at you know, your pleasure at my pleasure yeah <laughs> Okay, can you describe a little bit about your circumstance and, and what um, staff well comment about pl placement options? So the, the, the honestly, there's, I, I've made the measurements and I think there's really only one spot that's behind our home that you could plunk a barn and have it be 100 feet from everything. Um, and that's on a fairly sloping area. You'd almost have to put a bank barn there. Um, and there's just a boatload of trees and we've already had the adjacent property stripped of just about every tree that was on that property, 30 acres. So we're really interested in not having to remove any trees. Um, and that also is, is, is a, a fair distance. If you look on the satellite image, I think, you know, the, the grassy part of the property is out in front and uh, the rest of the stream area is all wooded and obviously we don't want to take any trees down around the stream it's nice to keep the stream shaded and uh, and we like being able to look out the back windows of the house and not see anybody okay so to be crystal clear the proposed location would be at the bend the second bend in the driveway correct. towards the second residence correct okay which is adjacent to a it pasture puts it a, yeah it, it's actually in the grassy area uh, there's some goats that are living in a penned area right now adjacent to that um, So it's about 25 feet from my reckoning as far as measurement from that site plan to the property line Yes, sir, Paul a couple questions. Um, are you planning to have a bathroom in this barn? No Are you gonna plan to have a wash stall in the barn? Uh, there'll be like a hydrant, but we're not really putting a wash stall now. You sure? Yeah, we really wanted to make a fairly small. There's not a large footprint, so we have three horses. So it's basically four 12 by 12 areas, and we want to have a tack room, so we would wash the horses outside. Okay. The reason I ask that question, if you do contemplate a, a, a bathroom, mm -hmm. I, I just want to be very concerned about getting any septic fields in our stream buffers. Yeah, because no, there's no, adjoining. absolutely no interest in putting a bathroom in the I barn. I understand that. Um, but sometimes we get overruled. And uh, and I just want to make sure that points. I would do what we did in the barn that I grew up in, and, and we would go to the bathroom the way the horses do. Understood. Well, that, that's even worse. <laughs> and, uh, and if I have to explain why, then I'll. I'll no, we don't need so. to go down that path. Um, 
and again, manure waste, again, you've got a stream fairly close to your barn area. And I, I just ask you, if at all possible, to be cognizant of that. My plan is actually to create a compost area away from the stream. Okay. All right. That's all I can ask. I have a big garden that that's my plan is to use to compost sure. for the garden. Do you have horses on the property now? We do not. Okay. We own three horses that are on somebody else's property that we would like to bring to our property. Okay. Understood. Other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, do you have anything further to add? I think that's it. And I feel All like right. I answered your four question criteria in my letter. So I'm happy to answer questions. Or We'll have an opportunity for a rebuttal after we have public comment, sure. if there is any. Um, at this point, I will open the floor uh, for public comment. Same process as before. In favor, first 10 minutes in opposition, followed with equal amount of time. Is there any anyone here to speak in favor? Is there anyone here to speak against? Hearing and seeing no uh, interest in public comment, you do have an opportunity for a closing statement if you care. Um, it's not, you're not obligated. Are there any further questions for the applicant or for staff? On the staff, is this barn not in their front yard? We are allowed to have a barn in the front yard. That's correct. Um, it's stated in the packet but not on the site plan, which we often reference, the dimensions um, of, the, of the barn. How would you suggest that we identify that? I mean, it, I did, wasn't really interested in putting in a max, but you certainly can in your condition. Just condition that mm -hmm. to the size of the barn? even though it's not noted on the site plan? Does it really matter? Well. Oh, that's to scale? Yes. Okay. Um, anything further for staff? All right, with that, um, I will close the public hearing and open the floor for a motion and a second. Yes, Walt. Okay, I'm going to make a motion for approval of B17-005. This is to allow a barn to be less than 100 feet from a property line, Article 2, Section 64, 415A4A, with the following conditions. The staff recommends, excuse me, um, that this is based on a site plan by Brumbelow and Reese, dated 8-8-2014, Showing, uh, showing and labeled as a barn, not barn alternate. Again, that's 8-8-2014. I, uh, I second that motion. Um, just to be clear, we don't have any exact details on, I mean, exact location it's not an engineered uh, location. What aspect of it are you looking to have them comply with? Looking at the plan, it looks like it's... There's two barns there's noted. Yeah, there's two barns noted, so I, I made mention of the one that's labeled barn, not barn, alternate. And then secondly, it does show a general relationship to this stream buffer as well as looks like a side setback line and I mean, so just the general location. I think general other location features based shown. on the site plan is all okay. I was trying to get to. So I, I thought okay, that was just generic enough. That okay, just in other words, there, I, there I will be some flexibility. I mean, I as so. to what the city can enforce based on this site plan. I understand. Okay. Right. Uh, being like we don't have like a fenced-in right. spot. Right. There's no reference point. So That's we just have to get best guess. Right. Clearly, but clearly they can't be. North end, if if that's yeah, it can't be in the north end of the property. Yeah, sure. uh, in this yeah. area. 
But okay. generally, you can just be able to play it like this. It's going to get somewhat close. Okay. But we, we will, if you're looking for a scale from what you think, we're not going to have exact. I'm not just, yeah, I'm I, generally. I'm just making sure that's clear. Yeah. If I need to clarify my motion well, based I on the site plan by Brumble and Reese, dated 8 8 2014, generally showing the barn location, not the barn alternate location. Generally, any further discussion? I'm going to restate the motion so that it's clear for the record. The mo yep. Yes, there was a second. Okay. I'm sorry. Who uh, said? Did you say? I did. Oh, huh. Oops. Um. And if, it, if, I, if it, maybe if I didn't, I, I will second this motion to make it crystal oh, clear did. for the record. I thought I did. We, did. Um, we got sidetracked with the clarity. The motion is uh, to approve V17-005, allowing a barn to be less than 100 feet from the property line per the site plan dated August 8, 2014 by Brumbelow and Reese, generally showing the location labeled as barn and not to be, not noted as barn altern alternate. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passed unanimous four to zero. Good luck with your project. <clears throat> Item number six is consideration of appeals and secondary variances. Um, nothing much to report there other than those text amendments were in the queue. And That's on your old business? Tax amendments are in queue? Oh, I'm sorry. Jump ahead. Um, I have no secondary variances or appeals. Okay. And uh, old business? Those, uh, you gave us permission to go forward with those two tax amendments at our last meeting, and they're in the queue. What does that mean when they're in the queue? Just uh, especially for, well, for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're aware of them, and once we get finished with the current round of tax amendments will work up official wording. And where did those go first for review? Um, do they go to the Planning Commission or do they go directly to City Council? A little, but there'll be a community zoning information meeting for the public. It'll go to the Planning Commission and it'll go to the City Council. Okay. Thank you. Any other old business? I have none. New business. Um, I, I had one point I wanted to clarify, and that's confirming our 2017 calendar. What <coughs> I did not have a November meeting noted on my calendar, and I wanted to make sure that was accurate. That seems good. <coughs> I think the one last time I saw has one. Um, I don't think there was a conflict or anything. November. There was discussion, I recall, but I don't remember one, the two, outcome. Three. In the terms 21st. of Thanksgiving, yeah. that being Thanksgiving week, I think we uh, moved it up. I think I thought we did too, and I don't have record of it. Right? Did you want to move it? I thought we already agreed to. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can you we send a note out to us identifying what you have in, in the record as far as our meeting mm -hmm. schedule? I have that? it. I have it. I have it scheduled for the twenty-first. Um, but if you want to change it, I think we did. I think we wrote it on. I thought we did too. Back in yeah, January. January or December, we talked about it. Okay. It, w it would be on the meeting minutes, perhaps, yeah. maybe? Something should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, do you have a new we business? We changed it I to, do. what did we change it to? We, I don't remember. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> okay, I'll find out. And Hodge <laughs> asked me, and I couldn't give him an answer. Okay. <laughs> Two new things. Um, I'm just asking, how are we doing on our new, any new appointments for our vacancies? Anything happening there? I the did hear from Rick that um, I made an, uh, an offer as I had with Karen to meet with potential applicants to brief them on our, our board, which I had done so with Hodge, and he said in our last meeting, and uh, Rick suggested that he may take me up on that offer, and I have not heard anything further since then. And then secondly. A and I have also made others in on council aware of my concern about this vacancy, verbally. And then secondly, um, you know, I know you're just starting off, but I know there's 
two things they made us take a video learn about. Um, I don't know if you've shared it with him yet or not, but uh, and, uh, and they talked about the press release and a lot of these other things. And so there's some new hire type of training. I, yeah, you're right. It's been a while. Yeah. We yeah, did. We recorded our last training session, and it should be on our website. Um, I will hunt it down and see if I can send you the link. And there's a conflict of there's a conflict of issues, or yeah, there, there was another ethics video that we also had to watch. I can find it. Was that, that must have been with all the boards? That was with all the boards. It was with all yes, the boards. Yes, it was. And, uh, and again, I don't know if you saw either of those. I mean, that no, no. Okay. So. Oh, you have a homework you have assignment. Any okay. Both. Understood? Both. Oh, you both have homework assignments, I guess. Okay. okay. Send it to Kim, too. It's on the record it's now. It's on the record. So. Test is not. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.